This is a special presentation from the Brighton Central School District Board of Education. Good evening. Welcome to the Brighton Central School District Board of Education public meeting for Tuesday, April 26th. Great day to be a Bruin. You will notice our surroundings look a little different tonight. We set a goal at the beginning of this school year to do a public board meeting at each of our four schools. And we are at 12 Corners Middle School tonight. And with that, we will have held a meeting at each of the four schools. The board had a chance to tour the school for a little bit, see some projects that were completed and some projects that are in need of completion. And for those of you who are here tonight, all those white packages out there are a new roof that's gonna go in so that we have to, we can actually pull up all the white buckets that are catching water for us uh, that are coming through the roof. So uh, grateful to be able to be here and uh, hosted by Danielle Evans. Thank you very much. Um, great new tradition. We're gonna start again hearing some uh, Brighton Believer Award winners. Dr. McGowan, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, so last school year, the Brighton Believes Council selected 30 nominees to receive a <coughs> Brighton Believers Award, and we didn't forget about those members of our school community. Wanted to make sure they're recognized for the work that they have done for demonstrating the Brighton Believes character traits of integrity, respect, responsibility, kindness, and self-control. These award winners are parents, students, teachers, staff members, coaches, and community members, and we're so glad that you and your families could join us tonight. So what I'm going to ask you to do when I call up the nominee for the award, if you could come on up, and the person who nominated them, if you could also come on up and stand next to them. I will read the nomination, and then we'll ask you to just stand here for a moment while we take your picture so we can spread the word far and wide about the wonderful things that you've done for our community. Our first uh, person to be recognized is Anna Miller. Anna was nominated by Julie Lanavara, if you could both come on up. We're going to pretend that Mrs. Lanavar is standing right here. Couldn't, couldn't make it. Uh, you're now a 12 Corners Middle School sixth grader, of course. Mrs. Lanavar wrote, Anna comes to us. And I should say Anna or Anna? Anna. I just want to make sure I say it the right way. Anna comes to school eager to learn and always puts forth her best effort. I don't think I have ever known of another student who consistently demonstrates these traits. Math and social studies teacher Rebecca Rauscher added, she genuinely cares to do her very best with whatever task lies in front of her. Our teacher, Erin Bertner, wrote, given the chance to get to know Anna, you will instantly fall in love with her personality. Physical education teacher, Mark Salerno, wrote, Anna is a role model for classmates to look up to. Music teacher, Debbie Parker, added, Anna Miller personifies what the Brighton Blees Award is all about. Did you have any staff member that did not participate <laughs> in this award? You are a remarkable human being, Anna, and congratulations. Thank you for all that you did. Congratulations on that. Talia Ferrara, please come on up. Uh, nominated by classmate Ella Katz. How you doing, Talia? Great. <laughs> Talia Ferrara, now a 12 Corners Middle School eighth grader, was nominated by classmate Ella Katz. Ella wrote, Talia Ferrara is always kind, thoughtful, and respectful. She demonstrates everything that Brighton Believes stands for. She is an amazing friend, person, and student. Talia tries hard in every subject and not only works hard for her grades, but helps others too. Classmate Mira Grossfield added, Talia makes me laugh. Talia doesn't want people to be sad. Ruby Jin added, Talia is a wonderful person for many reasons. Carly Leichner wrote, Talia is such a great friend because she is so caring and welcoming. She lights up every room she is in with her positive and friendly attitude. She's also really good at telling stories and making me laugh. I'm so grateful to have her as my friend. You had an entire committee of friends. Congratulations <laughs> to you. Today.
Nolan and Mr. LaPaglia. If you could come on up, Mr. LaPaglia. Claire Nolan, now a 12 corners. You can, uh, look, you should look at all your adoring fans. Mm -hmm. uh, now a 12 corners middle school sixth grader was nominated by Fres Phys Ed teacher Rick LaPaglia. He wrote, Claire is one of the students that validates my decision to become involved in education. She continues to be an absolute joy in PE. I can always count on Claire to be doing what she was told and doing it at a high level. Claire is active in softball, lacrosse, dance, and tennis. She can also be found at Rock City Circus doing aerial, s s aerial silks, hoops, and the trapeze, and is a self-taught gymnast, contortionist, ballet dancer, and trampoline pro. Her classroom teacher, Jessica Cordova, added, Claire comes to school prepared every day, ready to learn, and always has a positive attitude. She says Claire is kind-hearted, a great friend, and a kind classmate to everyone. Also the first person in their award to ever be referred to as a contortionist. <laughs> Congratulations, Claire, on being a wonderful human being. Ali Antha Matten. Matten. Also nominated by Mr. LaPaglia. This is Rick LaPaglia returned to school night. It's so great to see you. Now at 12 Corners Middle School, sixth grader was nominated by Fres, phys ed teacher Rick LaPaglia. I feel so lucky to have Ali in PE this year. Every day he comes to PE, he is in a cheerful and happy mood. Ali has a smile that just lights up the gym. During the remote PE sessions, Ali frequently sends me a four to five minute long video of him performing the activities at home. He laughs and smiles so much during the videos. He is active with a fast swim team, Cub Scouts, and loves to hike, travel, explore nature, and cook. His classroom teacher, Mary Giordano, added that Ali is always so excited about school. She said he is a kind and gentle boy, and she has been lucky to be his fifth grade teacher. Ali, we are very lucky that you are a wonderful student here at Brighton. Congratulations. Oh, Mr. LaPaglia, don't go, don't go too far. <laughs> Nominated by students Trevor and Claire Nolan. Trevor and Claire Nolan, you can come on up too. <laughs> Rick LaPaglia, who just retired from being a French Road Elementary School physical education teacher for 27 years. He started when he was like 15, right? You can tell. Uh, the students wrote about him, were nominated, I'm sorry, by students Trevor and Claire Nolan and their parents, Vin and Kim. The students wrote, he is always looking out for his students. When he notices that one of the children isn't looking like normal, he makes sure to check in with them. We all feel valued and important around Mr. LaPaglia because he treats everyone like they matter, regardless of appearance, skill, or gender. Their parents said, we're grateful for the education in PE and as a role model of these traits, Mr. LaPaglia has given what will serve our kids well for the rest of their lives. We think this is a great way to see him off and know that he'll be missed by many. Also a great way to bring him back. I speak from the same experience as a parent whose kids have done nothing but enjoy being around Mr. LaPaglia each and every opportunity. We miss you greatly. Congratulations, Mr. LaPaglia. And Teddy Anthamon. <laughs> Nominated by Mr. Tappan, Council Principal. 
now a French Road Elementary School third grader nominated by Mr. Tappan who wrote, Teddy is such a thoughtful, kind, outgoing second grader at Council Rock Primary School. Each day his greeting to me and many other adults puts a smile on my face. He is one of the rare children who is genuinely interested in the answer to his question when he asks you, how are you? His enthusiastic great really shows his positive approach to life. In the classroom, he is a helper going out of his way to help clean up and support a friend. Teddy shows his bright beliefs traits each day, and I'm so proud of him. Teddy, thank you for making this a much better place to be an example for so many. Congratulations. At these meetings, we talk about a lot of important things, and the board thinks about policies that will help everybody and support everybody. We talk about the budget quite a bit and having enough resources for people. Dr. Leaner will present tonight about innovative student learning and a lot of great programming. But at the end of the day, I'm sorry, Dr. Rio will okay. present <laughs> about innovative student learning. At the end of the day, this though, these awards and this conversation and the things that you're doing to make this a better school community and to just brighten people's day is so much more important than anything else we do. It is really what we do, right? Being together as a school community and being around great human beings who do good things for other people is really a special, special thing and we so appreciate you making our school community better. So one more round of applause for all of you and thank you. that you would like to stay and hear the principal reports and the update from Dr. Ryu. Or you might have a lot of homework at home that you need to attend to and some other things at home. So for those who came for the Brighton Believer Awards that need to get back and do some other work, school work in particular, you are welcome to get up and leave now. You are otherwise welcome to stay as we go through some other things. We'll wait just a minute for uh, the room to clear. We're back on, thank you. As is the case with every public meeting, we have the opportunity for public participation. Is there anyone here who would like to speak? Seeing no one, next up on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. You all previously received a tonight's agenda. I need a motion to approve, please. So Moved by Karen. Second. Seconded by Sue. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. We also have received the approval, I'm sorry, we received the minutes from the April 12th uh, business meeting and executive session. Does anyone have any changes or edits to those minutes? Motion to approve the minutes as received. Moved by Andrea. Second. Seconded by Esther. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Approved. So help me, is Dr. Rio or Mike Lehner? It would appear so as Dr. Rio. I knew that really, but you know. Okay. Yes. Okay. I saw Innovative Student Learning and just jumped right there. So. Yes, Dr. We Rio. We are going to have an update on Innovative Learning from Dr. Rio. We're going to have a learning update. Oh. So okay. <laughs> that's yeah. what we're going to have today. Thanks, Kelsey. Yes, hello, and um, today I just wanted to kind of give some updates on some of the work that's happening around the district that you might have heard a little bit about throughout the year and some that you haven't heard about. But I wanted to frame our work today in the work that our teachers and students are doing around our culturally responsive and sustaining education framework. Awesome. And I just wanted to bring this up to kind of frame our reference for my conversation today and the four areas that I'll hone in on are our welcoming and affirming environment, which is everywhere you go all the time. So there's no way I could highlight that in its entirety, but I'll highlight a few pieces of that. Inclusive curriculum and assessment, our high expectations and rigorous instruction, and our ongoing professional learning that we have for teachers. And this is from the New York State Education Department's CRSC framework. 
in a nutshell, this is really tiny here on the screen, but I'll kind of give you an idea of some of the work that we've been doing over many years around this framework. And I've mentioned this before, but the framework is new as of last year to the state, but it definitely is um, a repre representation of the work we've been doing over many years here in Brighton. So, you know, some of the things that you've heard a lot about are learning spaces, restorative practices, social emotional learning, family engagement, our hiring practices, all of the things we've been looking at fit right into this framework already. So this isn't new, but really just an affirmation of the work we've been doing. And these are the four parts again that we'll touch on today. So as I mentioned, you really can't go anywhere in our district without feeling that welcoming environment. As you walk into classrooms, as you walk into school buildings, you'll see it in lots of different ways. So today I'll just highlight a few ways um, that people, our teachers have shared with me and I've seen around our school district this year, right here at TCMS. Um, this is an example of some of the quotes that were painted in the hallway this summer. And that's Victoria Mosetti, school psychologist here, who's kind of leading the way. But um, the environment that the students are in every day should be, they should be able to walk the halls and feel that they are welcome, they're affirmed, and these are the kind of things that you'll see around TCMS and in other school bu buildings as well. But these positive affirmations, you matter, you're valued, you, lo you are loved, you are worthy, those are the kind of things that um, have been added to TCMS this year, which is pretty fantastic. And welcoming and affirming environments isn't just what you, know, you see on the walls or what you see in classrooms, but here is an example of Ellen Harp's technology space where she tried to create a sp safe space through her work in her classroom, thinking about not only what her classroom looked like and how students were um, sitting and arranged, <coughs> but even the um, different religious and cultural prohibitions and types of foods that they could interact with. She has this unit that she does where she reads this book about um, creating this marshmallow sculpture. And she shared with me last year that this is a unit that she you know, bought marshmallows and prepared this unit and lesson with the students. And some of the students said, we can't eat this because they're not vegan or vegetarian or all the different dietary restrictions. So with her students this year, she um, had them create a list of all the different things that they could include. And this year, I don't know how, but she has <laughs> marshmallows that are vegan, vegetarian, kosher, gluten-free, omnivore and halal so like all different types of marshmallows and she um, was able to purchase that through um, a grant that she got so you know that's creating a safe, safe space for students within the curriculum too so that they can be part of everything that's happening and not feeling like they're excluded because of their culture or their beliefs or their dietary restrictions also here at TCMS you heard about this, I believe, earlier in the year with a principal report from Mrs. Edmonds, but this is just an example of students who are painting rocks for the Peace Garden for John McFadden Golden Heart Award, or John McFadden's garden that they're creating with these um, kindness rocks and decorating rocks. And it's an example of creating an environment in the school where people are celebrated for the um, traits of kindness and working hard and caring, and students are part of that celebration too. And then on a bigger scale, we've continued with restorative practices in our school district across all four school buildings, um, in addition to our community building circles and the work that's happening in our K-5 around those circles on a daily basis and 6-12, um, more academic at times, but still including those circles. Our administrators and counselors have also started training around restorative discipline and have started to think about what that looks like um, on a different level of thinking about what restorative practices could be included as opposed to traditional forms of you know, discipline like suspension and those types of things. So that's something that we've taken a little bit more of a dive into this year and will continue as we move forward. But all of that is in um, terms of thinking about our environment here and how students should be treated and how students can fix harm and move forward and continue to be a productive student here and continue to learn and grow. Jumping into some instruction now, you probably heard a lot, and if you've been at Fruz, you've seen all the change makers exhibits through Black History Month, but this work has continued on in some of the classrooms at Fruz beyond just Black History Month. And this is an example from Mrs. Fallon's fourth grade class. They are reading literature that they selected where change makers identified a cause and acted on it. And these are two examples of the books that they're reading, Simon B. Ryman about a student who encourages people to celebrate music and brings that into the world, and then a long walk to water. And the class together has been looking at how they can make a difference in the community, 
and they've decided to make toys for Lollipop Farm, and um, they're reading lots of Changemaker books and creating a great Changemaker Hall of Fame that will be showcased, showcased very soon, if not already. So lots of great things happening in our instruction. Our literature is something that we continue to reflect on across all of our classrooms, K through 12. And here's an example of some of our second grade students in Mrs. Linton's class just diving into some new diverse texts. And instead of using the texts that um, our students have traditionally used in the classroom, we'll keep those and add some more so that there's that continuation of something we've been looking at for years, but just having texts where students can see themselves represented, where they can see others' perspectives and representation of their friends and family and all the kids that are in our school community. And then as far as spaces, um, we're thinking about what makerspace looks like across the district. And Council Rock has developed a makerspace in their library this year that we're getting off and running. And Frez is also creating a makerspace right now. The middle school has plans. The high school has completed a makerspace. So this is really about the environment for our kids to kind of learn and grow in wherever they want to in many ways. And we were just talking in the hallway about makerspace and what does it really mean? But what it means is that it opens up the window for kids to do a lot of exploring in their learning and um, thinking about you know what they're interested in learning, but also having opportunities to um, make things and show their learning in a different way. Sometimes we just literally don't have the space in the classrooms to do that. We don't have the room, the supplies, um, and that kind of could stifle some creativity for students. So more to come about that, but you'll see learning spaces throughout the district. Here's another example of a learning space, which is pretty cool. This is in Robin Leckenby's class and also Jessica Willis's fourth grade class. Some tables that they made actually that are made out of whiteboards that the students can write on and um, participate in groups and just kind of use that as a space to learn and show their thinking um, and collaborate with each other. We also have included some Promethean boards at Council Rock and Fres. So you will see these in the classrooms at Council Rock and in some classrooms at French Road as we move to include them in all of our classrooms. But these have really brought a new spin on our learning. And this is a classroom, just wanted to show you a um, Promethean board because that is able to move around the classroom. So that's how it looks a bit different than a smart board. The smart board would have been mounted on the wall at the front of the room. But there are a lot of benefits for our students. And I just want to highlight a few of them here. The mobility, obviously, can move around the room. You don't have to be tethered to one spot in the classroom. But really, what's awesome is the ability to collaborate. So you can see in this bottom picture, that is the work of many students at the same time who are responding to a problem. So the difference, you know, a smart board where one person can come up, one person can write at a time. Now we can have lots of students collaborating. We can have connectivity from different users. So if a mental health provider or ESS teacher, for example, comes in the classroom, they can connect with their device so that they can easily participate in the classroom and keep the flow going. Lots more student agency in the classroom. Students are able to show their work really quickly. So they can share their learning, they can make their learning visible for their classmates and for their teacher. And um, you can see in this picture, there's a student sharing the work that they had on there. And you can also have a split screen where you can have you know, a piece at the top, which is some instruction and some other work at the bottom. And then there's lots of great built-in features like the smart board, but there's you know, timer, spinner, whiteboard, lots of different things on there. But um, it's been a really awesome addition to our elementary classrooms and uh, has definitely helped to change teaching in a way that allows kids to show their thinking more, collaborate more, and also just be responsive to the fact that we have one-to-ones now. So we want our kids using iPads. We want them to be able to show their work. It's a really great way for them to be able to do that. And then just a quick snapshot of some professional learning. We have lots of book studies going on around the school. These are just a sampling of book studies that are going on right now across the district. We just had um, earlier in the month Superintendent's Conference Day with lots of professional development for teachers to choose from along the lines of mental health and wellness and equity and um, all of our blueprint kind of topics. We had lots of great work come out of that day, so that was pretty awesome. And last, I just want to highlight three classrooms. So there was a lot to highlight here, um, but there's some awesome work happening with in terms of curriculum and assessments. So Mrs. Beato's kindergartner, she shared this with me and I wanted to share it with all of you. She's partnered with RIT with her kindergartners and she's working with a class of um, graphic design students who have to create for their final project um, a design based on what um, kindergartners have created. So they've created this choice sheet 
which basically is very basic for kindergartners, but they're going to make buddies for them. So what do you want your buddy to look like? My buddy is going to be real or imaginary, small, medium, large, and there's all these questions that they go through and they collaborate with the kids. They, they ask, the RIT students ask for feedback from the kids. The kids go back and forth. And then um, the students at RIT actually have to create this buddy for the Council Rock students. And tomorrow they're going to share them via Zoom so the students can see what their buddies look like and their collaboration. But a really great way of showing our youngest learners connected to the Rochester area, connected to different types of programs and students and both of the classes actually have a lot of different types of learners in them. Mrs. Beato shared that the RIT class has several students who are deaf. The Both classes have ELL learners in them, so really cool collaboration that she's really proud of. And I, can't, I actually can't wait to see how this goes tomorrow. I'm going to join in to see what the buddies look like. At the high school level, jumping all the way up now to BHS, but I wanted to highlight just two really interesting equitable assessment practices, one in science and then one in math. And in science, we have a group of science teachers who have been working with an NSF grant with the U of R, focusing on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And one of the things that they've tried this year is to shift their assessment practice from a traditional lab write-up, whereas probably many of you have done when you were in high school, you write that lab, follow the format, similar format, but instead they're creating a flip grid where the students can create an oral demonstration of what they learned and turn that into their teachers teachers can watch it and still get that same information. Because one of the things that we found, especially in science education, is that students are able to communicate differently verbally than written. I mean, that goes true for everything. But in science, when you're listening to a child explain how something works or why a lab works a certain way, it often is different than what they write on that paper. So this was a way to access what the kids have know and what they learned in a different way that still has a rubric associated to it, that still holds them to that same rigorous standard, but offers them a different way to show what they learned, which has been really cool so far. And um, I'll get some more feedback. A couple classes have gone through this process, a couple more are still working through. And then we'll hear from the students too to see what they thought. And then our Algebra 1 team in math has also taken a look at grading a bit differently with their grading for equity. Book study that they did last summer, and we have more teams jumping on board this summer as well at the high school level. But the grades, they've decided that the grades are going to be based this year on summative assessments with retakes and formative assessments with self-evaluated practice tracker. So I'll tell you what that means. But this, the um, practice tracker is a way for students to, this is just an example from one of the students' one notes, it's a way for students to kind of self-assess what they are learning and what they need more help with. So this is a way for teachers and students to um, stay connected to like what I need to keep working on and um, it's a way for them to inform what they need to do to teach a bit um, more to students. And as far as the retake, students are able to retake parts of their math tests that they didn't um, score well on or they didn't understand and they are able to get retaught, take the retest again, and take the test until they've learned the content, which is the goal, right? We want our kids to leave learning the content for the class and not just not getting the grade. So it's been a lot of work for them. I really applaud their efforts. They've done such an awesome job and we're looking at um, Andrea Doyle, our uh, 612 math leader, has done great work with this, looking to expand this beyond just Algebra 1 into Algebra 2 and beyond next year too. And the last couple of slides, I won't read through all of these because I know I've been talking a lot here, but this is just some of the feedback from students um, after an, um, the students were given a survey to see how they felt. So what impact had the retakes had on your feelings of mathematics? You can see here from the students just how they're feeling. They understand the subject better, it's less stressful, it's not scary, less anxiety, they feel more secure. If they get a low grade, they don't have to worry about that's the end, they're done, you know? Um, positive things about grading systems that they shared here. And they just really, the feedback is, you can take as long as you need to get what you need to get, and as long as you keep putting in the effort, you're gonna, you're gonna get out of it what you need to and you're gonna do well. So less stress, the point really is for finding ways to help our kids become the best learners they can be, you know? So it's not about the grade in the end, but about the learning that they, that they experienced. And just wrapping up with a quote from Zaretta Hammond around culturally responsive teaching, reflecting and being willing to listen and change in order to respond positively and constructively. And I hope that you've seen that's kind of a demonstration of what <coughs> our teachers are doing every day here. They're looking at our students, they're responding to what they need, and they're thinking about different ways to reach all of our learners.
Thanks. Questions? Questions for Dr. Rio. That was impressive. Thanks. Thank you. Questions? I just want to say that I love seeing all of the things you've talked about in curriculum council through the years find their way into our classroom, doing the right things for kids. Thank, Thank you. And all that work lines up nicely with both rigorous coursework and equity, which are two focuses of our blueprint, obviously. I think the way that we're teaching now is more in line with the, the real world, too. Mm -hmm. you, know, um, you know, we know that there are different types of learners, so being able to give a presentation orally to say what you know, I mean, that just, that just makes sense. Or if at first you don't succeed, try again. You know, I mean, that's, I just think it's more Absolutely. realistic, too. So it's very impressive. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Thank you. Well, Ms. Edmonds, we are at the middle school, so I suppose you <laughs> should get to go first. <laughs> nice try, Principal Tappy. <laughs> I just asked him how much he paid you to go first, but... <laughs> okay, so I feel, I actually, if you ask Kim Lanzafame, I sent her my presentation like two weeks ago because I feel like I haven't <laughs> presented in so and long. What's that? And you the only one. <laughs> I, well, we just want to make sure that we're on, uh, on top of our game here, so... Anyway, so I have a lot to share because I feel like I have two months worth of material to share, but I will go through it quickly with you. Maybe. So I'm going back to March. It was Music in Our Schools Month, and I just want to point out we started out with a bang in our District Wide Strings uh, concert that actually took place uh, in our uh, gym as well as other areas as well, but it was an amazing start to the month. We had um, numerous concerts here as well and at French Road for our band, orchestral, and vocal music groups. We had uh, 29 of our sixth through eighth graders were also selected for junior high all-county festival this year. And we actually also had two students in the New York State Middle, that were, were selected to participate in the New York State Middle School Honor Band. So we had a, a, a wonderful array of things going on in March to celebrate music in our schools month. And along with that, we also had our Brighton Believes Day, where we had three presenters who joined us via Zoom, uh, one per grade level. So we had someone from Asbury talk with our sixth graders, someone from Habitat for Humanity with our seventh graders, and then somebody from Keeping Our Promise for our eighth graders. And all of them spoke around the theme of um, struggles with insecure and lack of housing. And so the school together decided that uh, we wanted to collect items for Ukrainian refugees in our community. And you can see uh, this is one of our transports here. This is the back of the Falters car with <laughs> many of our belongings that we collect. Students also created pins and bracelets uh, that donations were accepted for, as well as you know, guess the candy jar and things like that where students were able to, and families were able to make donations. So very successful group effort as a school. So that was wonderful. We also had our winter spring-ish activity nights for all three grade levels. Again, wonderfully attended, and I, I continue to say that I can't say enough about the PTSA and their organization of these nights. They're just, every detail is taken care of and they run seamlessly. The kids really enjoy themselves, lots of laughter, and uh, you just see them let their guard down and be themselves, it's, it's, it's really a lot of fun. We also had uh, Stephanie Elkins um, <laughs> overcame her fear of taking the district van to RIT, and she took our students to the E3 competition, which hasn't run live in a couple of years, obviously, because of COVID. We had uh, mostly grew a group of sixth graders this year, and uh, for their first time participating, we had second and third place winners in the group, and a great experience for them just to see what students in other buildings and other districts were doing. I may have shared that before. Our book fair was also in March, and this year it was really nice. We moved on to using a local vendor book culture from Pittsburgh, and the diversity of text was amazing and certainly representative of our students. But um, I will say kind of, uh, you know, off to the side, what I really enjoyed was it was a book fair, and we sold books at it, and um, all of the other kind of side things that are normally sold at our book fair were not existent and the students really, really <laughs> focused on texts and uh, they, they, did, they did very, very well. So that was super exciting. 
one thing that I didn't say about uh, March, and I can't believe I didn't put it in here, was we had our first trip to D.C. since COVID hit. So successful trip. Uh, Shelly Camp organized it and took um, Ms. Paddock and Mr. Green with her, and they took uh, quite a few buses of students, had great weather, and it was an awesome trip. So, so nice to be back in that routine again of um, one of the things that we're so proud of, which is our seventh grade trip. We also, um, prior to break, spent some time uh, with our sixth graders in their uh, sixth grade academies, working through many of the restorative circles uh, that, um, and community building circles that Dr. Ryu was talking about. We had our counselors engage and our sixth grade teachers, and they spent a lot of time talking about our culture and climate in our building and making suggestions about what they love, but also about what they would love to see be better over their next two years in our building and um, amazing opportunities for them to share their insights and uh, just feel safe being with each other and sharing their opinions. It's amazing what students will share when they just feel calm and that they're in it together. So those were fantastic. We also, I know I said this before, but we um, closed down WIN for the week before vacation and what I mean by that is students didn't go to other classrooms for academic help. They actually spent each day engaged with their teachers in WIN on activities centered around each of the Brighton Beliefs habits and what they did was uh, the students gave input on what will become our building-wide matrix for what does it look like uh, to be kind in the cafeteria, what does it look like to be kind in the hallway, what does it look like to be kind online. So we had all of our students participate in that, all 850, and we have an amazing amount of information that the administration and counselors and I are working to put together, and then we'll create our signage, and, and that will be our language, and that will be what we live through, and next year we'll be able to tie that into our work with Habits of Mind and make those connections so that we're, we're building this culture that the students said that they want to see. So none of this has been adult driven. It's been compu completely student driven, which is fantastic. FACTS continues to engage in all of their projects. They spent, seventh graders spent much of their time creating their um, pillowcases this year, and they donated all of them to Keeping Our Promise, which was one of our presenters for Brighton Believes Day. And we also had, I know I've talked earlier in the year about our students making dog biscuits and sharing them with, um, with local uh, agencies so they can give to their, their puppies. It's almost May, believe it or not, as I've been walking around the building, our science classes are already engaged in their lab finals. So these are our seventh graders in Ms. Twilliger's room, burning things up and loving every minute of it. So engaged in hands-on activities and then also the PTSA was able to put in for a grant and get us some blankets for our students to be able to eat lunch outside on nice days. So this was the first day on the right here that we were able to take our students, these are sixth graders, outside uh, cell phone free and enjoy themselves and just conversation and food and they've been doing a great job of cleaning up after themselves, respecting their time together outside and it's really been nice to see them enjoy the nature. So we've taken advantage of the few nice days that we've had and, and gotten them out there. And again, thank you to Ms. Moran, who continues to wash those blankets for us so that they're clean for students to sit on. Spring sports began in April, so that's ready to go. You probably saw some of the students sitting outside as they're ending their practices. And then our last thing is very new from yesterday. Mrs. Kantz was surprised by News 8 and was awarded the News 8 Golden Apple Award. And one of our sixth grade students, Isabella, wrote an amazingly wonderful letter about her. Isabella is sixth grader, new to our student, uh, new to our school, participates in our urban suburban program. And she couldn't speak enough about how Mrs. Kantz has impacted her love of reading and writing, but perhaps more important to me, she spoke extensively about how Mrs. Kantz makes her feel welcome here, has helped her make friends, and that she feels like she's a part of our community. So uh, kudos to Mrs. Kantz and kudos to Isabella for representing what we do every single day and what we believe in. We're in the midst of New York State math testing. Day one was today, day two is tomorrow. 
Our talent show is tentatively scheduled for the 12th, though we may push it back to June because there are some other district-wide events on the calendar that night and we don't want to compete. And the 18th through the 20th, our eighth graders will be going on their annual world language tours to New York City, Vermont, and Quebec. That's it. Thank you. Marin. Good evening. Good evening. I don't want to take Tom's thunder. Here we go. Awesome. So similar to Danielle, I've also been very eager to present this information. It's been prepared for quite some time. But uh, we've had lots going on at French Road and something really striking that you'll kind of catch as you're through the hallways uh, most recently are just some new art installations, which I'm always just in awe of what our art department um, has students create. When I'm in there observing and dropping in, you never quite see this finished product. It kind of is like a one in a million when you're there the day that it all comes together. Um, but seeing these things come out and be up on the bulletin boards and hearing students kind of share about the process and their thoughts, I just happened to catch a couple kids uh, right before break um, and talked through the thoughts around some of the pictures right in the middle of the cats. Um, it's just really cool to hear their thought process and, and what they got out of those projects together. Similar to Danielle, Music in Our Schools Month in March um, brought us back to some concerts at the building again, which this is actually a great time because we're just about to embark on another round of concerts coming up in May where we're really eager to have all of our students together to come and listen and be a part of a school community all together um, to listen and support their peers, which is wonderful. We also had uh, several participants on the Monroe County, all, um, Monroe County Elementary All-County Festival. Um, so the students were super proud, really eager to make that trip and to play. Um, it's really amazing given all of the changes in the schedules and practice schedules that COVID brought, the talent that our students possess really never ceases to amaze me um, and so these students uh, did not disappoint. Our Health Moves Minds um, fundraiser has been going on for quite some time and really it, it went on for a very finite amount of time but then as we continue to collect the money and we tally um, we continue to kind of find these tidbits and nuggets of really awesome um, work that kids did so I presented maybe it was last month or even the month before that about um, two young ladies at our building that raised about eight hundred dollars we had another student in our building, Harrison, who created his own elevator pitch and uh, went around to community members, family members, and ended up raising $2,200. So, um, you know, he knew it needed to be short and sweet. It needed to catch people's attention so that he wasn't just kind of going on and on about health moves, minds, and PE. Um, but he certainly caught some attention and um, we had actually several students who raised $500 um, and right around, right around that $500 mark, which is really exciting. So we uh, ended up raising right around $19,400. And so our PE department gets a really nice chunk of that. We also are able to donate a huge portion of that as well. Um, and uh, Pe Pencils and Paper, who is the group that I've talked about quite a bit, is actually going to be coming back out to French Road to say a personal thank you to a lot of our students who raised right around that 500 and more mark, um, and we'll be able to, to speak with them directly. So we're looking forward to that. Our student council uh, continues to surprise me each week. We, uh, again, I had spoken earlier this year that any student who applied to be in student council this year, they wrote a full application and gave their reasoning for why they wanted to participate. And instead of selecting a really small number of students, everyone was able to participate. And we just organized it differently so that uh, different groups of classes could kind of come together in little PLCs or professional learning communities. Um, their teachers are organized that way, so the students Students were organized that way for student council as well and they've really done a wonderful job each group uh, has had three sessions um, that they're able to meet over the course of a month and then they have another um, access to student council another set of three sessions later in the year 
And this group here, uh, right around St. Patrick's Day, was able to put a bulletin board together for all of the reasons why we feel lucky to be a Fres student. And they were able to make little shamrocks to staff and put adjectives or reasons why they felt connected to specific staff members. We had a staff list and we made sure every single person was on that board and not left out. So they did a really wonderful job. And we also headed outside. We've been outside in this really um, beautiful weather that we've had cleaning up um, along the fence, some of the areas that you might not see uh, easily every day. They've taken that really seriously and have done a really great job caring for our school. The previous group of student council, uh, prior to the folks that you just saw, they recognized and prepared for Bus Driver Appreciation Day, which was earlier in March, I believe around the 15th or 19th. Uh, and so they um, were really, uh, they're just the sweetest. They all remember their driver name. We got a full list of all of the drivers that drive for French Road, um, but they were able to write some nice notes um, on the buses and we worked through um, student council and some local businesses associated with French Road to um, do cookies for all of the drivers that the kids all delivered to them. Um, and they made a huge sign that we put outside French Road too. So we wanted to say thank you because they do so much for us. Uh, we also have a really exciting opportunity. Our health teacher, Janice Mix, um, put together a grant to enable us to bring another author to French Road this year to give our students another opportunity to Zoom with someone who writes a lot of books that they're really familiar with. Um, Susan Verde um, teams up with Peter Reynolds to um, create these beautiful pieces that you see here. I am peace, I am one, I am yoga. I am love, I am courage, I am human, and Janice uses some of those texts as she um, works through her health curriculum and talks about things like mindfulness um, and other topics related to these texts. So we're going to be able to Zoom with Susan on May 2nd, so we're really looking forward to that. We also Zoomed earlier this year with Peter Brown, and that was a wonderful experience for our students. Um, Brighton Believes Day was another opportunity where our students were able to connect with the community over at Pencils and Paper, um, as well as Bavona Child Advocacy. So our students created bookmarks. In addition to um, over the week of March 11th, we did a building-wide used book drive. Pencils and Paper has this great nook um, within their facility where as uh, teachers from RCSD come and get many school supplies, they can also come and actually look through this mini library and get books for their classrooms. And so they have this in-house resident volunteer librarian at Pencils and Paper who works really diligently to review every text that comes in, make sure that they have high quality literature on the shelves. And so we did a huge drive so that we could support some really specific needs that they had for particular grade levels. Once again, as Danielle said, I can't say enough about PTSA because our PTSA reps came in and sorted all of the books. We, got, we really got a ton of books. Um, and they came in and sorted them and made sure that we were identified uh, we were able to identify specific needs for Bavona. They really wanted some particular text too for some really young readers and then for pencils and paper as well. And it just had this added bonus every morning. We had all of the books out in the, li the lobby and every morning when I'd come in right around 7.30, you'd see kids who the lobby gets a little, um, it turns into a little bit of a ruckus some mornings, but every kid was in there while we were doing that book drive with a book in their hands reading quietly. So that was some food for thought for maybe some future things at Fres. Um, this is also the, the person that I was speaking of right at Pencils and Paper who does the, the book review in the library there. Our therapy dogs are also hard at work at Fres. Uh, we talked about them at the beginning of the year, but really truly as this year has gone on, it's been a really interesting year in a lot of ways. Um, students are seeking out these dogs throughout the building. They're used as rewards. Kids are, kids are working to earn time um, with Cosmo pictured here or with Charlie, and they're just really an integral part of our building, and um, they've certainly helped us get through a lot of bumps in the road this year. 
We also had uh, Kindness Club begin at Fres and run for a few sessions this spring. They've really just brightened a lot of people's day. They're, the kids come together on Thursday afternoons and they've just been popping in notes of kindness to staff, to students. They've set up a little table in the building where people can come and get a little note card and pass along notes of kindness to one another. Um, and so this is a really student-driven initiative and it's really great to see students kind of rallying around this. Our movie night is back at French Road. I just wanted to give that a little plug quickly. It's coming up this week on April 28th. Our doors will open at 5.30. We'll have popcorn and pizza. We're watching Encanto and it's gonna be awesome. So um, <laughs> tell all your friends, we'll be there. <laughs> Uh, so uh, just a couple events coming up. I feel like I've been talking for a while, so I apologize. Um, we have lots of things happening. So as you can see, I listed some April dates for you as I thought I was presenting a while ago. <laughs> we're, we're, just in case you wanted to know what we were up to. Um, we are in the midst, as Danielle mentioned, with our New York State math testing. We're embarking on day two tomorrow. Day one went really smoothly. We've got movie night coming up. We have lots of really exciting things planned for Teacher Appreciation Week. I cannot wait. Uh, we will be at Frontier Field where our chorus will be singing the national anthem at the Red Wings game on May 5th. We will have Clean Sweep um, coming through Fres, sprucing things up on May 7th, and we will be out of school um, in celebration for Eid on May 3rd. Um, so just to share a couple of those things with you all. Thanks so much. Thank you. Well, thank you. Ooh, let's see. Now it's my turn. All right. All right. I guess it's Tom Hall. Thank you. All right. So I'll go back to March as well, early March when we had our Brighton Believes uh, uh, Brighton Believes Day of Caring, um, we had an incredible food uh, drive and probably one of the biggest ones that we had. I thought last year was the biggest we've ever had. This we raised even more, and this is just the food in the upstairs. We had food at door 20 as well in the back. So an incredible amount of food went over to the Brighton Food Cupboard and they were extremely appreciated or appreciative of our efforts. Acapalooza, um, if you're familiar with all of our acapella groups, we started with Crazy Pitches many, many, many years ago. And now we've branched off into about six different a cappella groups. And Acapalooza was on March 12th. Machinats, Bruinats, and Crazy Pitches all performed. Uh, an incredible night. Tons of students there supporting the other students and their parents. Um, just a, a phenomenal night. All directed by Sarah Stabell as the advisor. But all of these groups for our folks at home are student driven and student run. And they uh, take turns. Um, having solos as part of the songs that they're performing and also their student directors who pretty much choreograph and run through all of the, the, the um, lyrics and what they're going to do as part of these songs that develop their own. So that's where a lot of the learning happens for students in high school. I mean, that is truly teamwork, collaboration, you know, working through conflicts. Uh, it's amazing and it was an amazing concert to watch. Kudos to them. Big, I wish Lila was here. Um, oop, Lila's coming up in the next slide. Lila Munger, our board rep, she and the exec council plan Bruin March Madness. So we've used to many, many years ago, this is probably when I was an assistant principal, did have a March Madness for a while and we do different activities during the week, but never quite like this. And I think after a year of, you know, kind of being sheltered and very limited school activities, um, kids put together a fantastic week of uh, themes, you know, we got to wear hats, wear brewing gear, got to wear grout fits. If you don't know what a grout fit is, basically it's gray from top to bottom. Doesn't mean you're in your sweatpants and sweatshirts. You can wear gray suits, you can wear gray uh, brewing shirts, which but I did really you wear much a gray enjoy. suit, Dr. Hall? I did not wear a gray suit. <laughs> that day was a total brewing fest for me. So that week I think I wore a tie once, maybe. No. Once I did. I didn't look at a jacket tonight and everything. But I had a I had a wonderful hat on on Monday. It was just I love the theme weeks. And uh, so you know Every we'll, we'll continue week, those. Dr. Hall. I know. 
Uh, and we've got to do a candy gram. I just have to be careful. We can't sell the candy or give out the candy during school hours. That's a no-no. So kids now, <laughs> instead of getting them in homeroom, you order your, your candy gram ahead of time, and then kids came into the gym <laughs> and picked up the candy at the end of the day. I know it's just wrong, but that's what we do. Um, but they sold a lot. It's, the well, it's part of wellness, part of our you know, school lunch program. It's what we do. We follow the rules. Um, and we did, so the kids came down and got them. But they sold. That was a fundraiser for the senior class. They actually did really well. And um, they had a uh, evening pep rally, which we haven't done for March Madness before, and a pie-in-the-face contest, which you could donate money and get pies in the faces. Several celebrities <laughs> sitting here had pies thrown in their face. Lila and Beanie. Uh, both exec council selling the tickets for candy grams, the teacher and the, the pie in the face, and selling you know old senior shirts. So this picture, just the one of Jess Wasserman, who's a special ed teacher. Um, so she got slammed with the pie, and I was getting pictures taken, and just the, the, the cream just flew all over the gym. It was supposed to stay in one place, but she really got hammered. Um, and we had a lot of fun, a lot of fun events. The kids really, uh, for midwinter, um, activity, probably one of the better ones. Not the best of attendance compared to homecoming pep rally, but I think it's definitely going to grow. And we had a promposal. If you were there, it was really exciting <laughs> to see um, two students who did the promposal, and they'll be going off to prom, or actually senior ball together. Those are our seniors. It was a red night for them. Uh, actually, the largest turnout were seniors, so that was great. I think it was good for the freshmen to see that. So next year, I think it's going to grow even more in popularity. But kudos to the exec council, their advisors, Teresa Mosier, um, and all the administrators helping th that out. So in our Drawing One classes, we've never done this project before, I came through the building and I thought people were starting to hang artwork, but then realized it was all tape. I hadn't I didn't realize we were doing this. I didn't know this was a project. So then I finally figured out who was representing because she had a sign there stating this is what we're doing for drawing one. And so this linear representation um, of something that is real or imaginative. Um, and you can see putting, so you can walk down by the art rooms and the band rooms and seeing all these murals. They're much bigger than what you can see on my pictures here. And this was just maybe halfway through, so they're completely done now. But a variety of uh, murals that they created and put up, um, all just tape, colored tape on the walls. I had never seen anything quite like it. And creating, um, you know, right next to the music rooms, a, a music display. And really, it's quite colorful and not one, as far as I can tell, not one kid has touched or wiped off anything or peeled it or did anything to it, which is phenomenal when you think about how many kids are walking through the building and the open campus and structure we have. So, but kudos to our, our art department for trying a new project. We had a phenomenal PTSA um, uh, luncheon for our teachers, kind of a little bit early for Teacher Appreciation Week. They put on tons of chilies and soups and salads. And this particular picture salad fest basically you can go through and every topping you want ptsa did a phenomenal job i want to thank them but that idea started back at french road um, with a parent who now has a um, two kids graduated and one who's a freshman and just a phenomenal job with all of it so thank you to ptsa i know the teachers look forward to that every year and one of the things i think just a few of our teams do it hockey um, does it and now uh, boys lacrosse where they'll invite uh, a teacher or two teachers to come. So all the seniors, our senior boys, invited one or two teachers to attend a senior night with them and they recognized them. They had a little uh, blurb that they, they had read on the announcements and gave them you know, some flowers and just, you know, it's just so nice to see teachers come. Everybody showed up for the recognition to be with those students and it was just a fun night and uh, uh, just appreciate the, the coaches for, for, for advocating for that and for our um, parents who uh, were basically ran the whole thing and putting it together. So thank you to the lacrosse program. Third quarter report cards. The grades come out on Thursday, and we're, we're only six weeks left of the fourth quarter, believe it or not. I know it's amazing. Six weeks left. Exams will start up. AP exams start next week, May 2nd to May 13th. 
senior ball on the 21st at CCR, so we will be at a location. Uh, Spring Fest is back on the 27th, going to be a little bit different this year. Uh, exec, just like they've done all year, they're planning all sorts of different things. We're gonna have a shortened schedule of classes in the morning, and then they're gonna have activities and a pep rally again to end the year, uh, the end of the day. So it's gonna be a little bit different, but coming back uh, with a vigor. So we're excited about that. Um, lots of upcoming activities as well. I'm just thinking, well, talked about a lot of it there. Any questions? A lot going on as always. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now saving the best for last. <laughs> Oh, board president Davis. <laughs> so we are going back to Brighton Believes Day, much like my colleagues did. Um, <clears throat> thanks to Dan Goldman who came over and really captured a lot of great pictures. Um, but our kids were able, at the K2 level, were able to complete a lot of different projects. And again, thanks to the PTSA, who always does an amazing job, but they organize, get the materials, get the directions for kids, um, make the connections with the organizations. Um, but we had over 200 cards and several centerpieces to the Brighton Jewish Home for people to celebrate on their special days made by our kindergartners and our first graders. Um, and these are just some pictures of kids at work, thanks to Dan. Uh, the Bethany House Charities and Centers for Youth um, we made over 100 single-serve laundry detergent packets uh, by our kindergartners, uh, over 300 dog toys braided for um, Lollipop Farm, and then for Willow Domestic Violence Center and House of Mercy, uh, 50 dental hygiene kits made with toothpaste, toothbrushes, and uh, notes from Council Rock students. So again, really connecting to <clears throat> the, the organizations and who they were able to, to serve, and then uh, 125 snack bags decorated and packaged by our kindergartners for the Ronald McDonald House. I love the variety that we do. I know other buildings kind of choose one. I love that our kids have those experiences throughout each grade um, to learn about a lot of different agencies and how they're helping. Our PE classes are practicing lifetime fitness. We had a special guest there. If you see Dr. Gasparino was there teaching some Zumba. I was joining in the fun up there. We had teachers joining in. It was just a really great time. Um, but really highlighting lifetime fitness uh, within our PE classes, uh, activities that can continue. So this week we had karate demonstrations from a local karate. Uh, instructor and then we also start with our bike and pedestrian safety uh, where Kristen Cooper and Max have uh, guests in from a safety agency to talk about bike and walking safety which leads us into next week is bike and walk to school day uh, so many of the board members were there volunteering for our ice cream social uh, which also was our book fair and I just have to say, it was really one of the most joyous events. Uh, we realized kind of as we went into it that none of our kindergartners, first graders, or second graders had experienced an ice cream social before because the second graders, it was canceled uh, in March. So the joy of seeing the kids come in with their parents, for a lot of parents, it was the first time they were back into the building kind of with open rain to it um, this year and seeing the pride that they had and the excitement that they had about it, returning to school, seeing all, and showing their parents all over. We sold a ton of ice cream, a lot of books, um, much like the middle school, uh, we had book culture um, run our books, and like Mrs. Edmonds, I very much appreciated that there were books and not erasers and posters, and although that stuff is fun, there was a lot, and we sold a lot of great books a lot of great donations to our teachers libraries from parents it just was it was a great event overall um and we got tons of feedback um from families and parents about how much they appreciated it so really <coughs> glad to be back and and have it be such a great hit <clears throat> last night uh, ptsa hosted an extracurricular fair at council rock 
Um, luckily, we got everyone in before the torrential downpour, sideways downpour uh, that happened. Um, but we had representatives from sports and music and um, cheer and all, all kinds of things for parents to be able to come in with their children and get information, sign up, um, and hopefully keep their children uh, busy outside of school. So it was really great and thanks to PTSA. I know next year we're really looking at partnering with French Road um, to make it a bigger event and maybe a little bit earlier to also include um, the summer signups uh, for summer camps and things like that. So we're looking at that, so stay tuned. Um, this is a math wall that Stefana Monachino and Kathy Hutter, our two kind of math specialists within the building, have put together. And you can't really see it, but um, it says the question could be, so the answer is posted at the top, and underneath it, it says the question could be, and this is posted right outside their offices, but it's conveniently located in a high traffic area right across from the um, gym as well. And so the answer was 10, and you can't really see it, I wish you could. Kids are adding what the question could be. So eight plus two could be 10. So just all different iterations and getting kids thinking. And there are pictures and there are number uh, representations. And um, teachers are stopping and doing it with their kids. Kids are stopping and doing it on their way places. It's just a really great way to get kids thinking differently and um, showing their math thinking, which was really fun. So appreciate that. Um, I reported uh, last time, I think, that we were doing personal body safety lessons a little bit differently in partnership with Bavona. Um, and those lessons have all taken place um, with kindergartners, first graders, and second graders. And then this week we're celebrating a blue ribbon week um, with a whole bunch of theme days. Um, unlike Dr. Hall, I wear my tie on theme weeks. Um, but uh, so, <clears throat> and it just reviews, it's a great way to review the five rules that they go over. So it's know what's up, spot the red flags, make a move, talk it up, and then no blame, no shame, which are, each of those has a special movement that goes with it that they teach. Um, the kids really enjoy it. They understand the context of it. And then we have uh, a special dress up for um, every day. So wear blue. Today was wear bright colors or a tie dye. Uh, tomorrow's wear your sports jersey. And they each go with one of, uh, one of the safety rules. Upcoming events, so I think Mrs. Jeffries mentioned uh, next week, no school on Thursday as we observe Eid. Uh, our PTSA Lifetime uh, Life Achievement Awards, we're really excited to congratulate two of our Council Rock friends, Liz Files, first grade teacher, and Jenny Robinson, who is one of our special educators, so we're really excited about that um, and celebrating them. And then Friday, we have our in-person author visit from Jardine Nolan, who we're really excited about. Um, we will be celebrating her, and then the following week, we're gonna have this special birthday book because she has a new book coming out, and where each class is gonna get a book that's gonna be wrapped. Again, special thanks to the PTSA for helping uh, with that, and they'll get to open it on the birthday of the book. Um, and we got special permission to get that book ahead of time because it's being actually published the week after she comes um, and released, and we're getting it on that day. And then uh, I'm sure Mrs. Jeffries and I will talk about this, but this beginning of the transition season for us, for our second graders to third grade. Um, so on Friday, May 6th, tucked in the middle of all those, um, <laughs> those uh, presentations of the author, uh, Mrs. Jeffries and I will be meeting uh, via Zoom with parents at noon uh, about the transition to Fres. And we've got a whole bunch of other activities, movie nights, uh, transitions, a field trip over to French Road to have our second graders really start to get accustomed and understand what uh, third grade could look like and help them ease that transition. Any questions? I'll just make one quick comment. That library continues to impress everyone, and I heard that from a few people at the Ice Cream Social. So um, just kudos for that, because it's just an outstanding space. Awesome, thank you. Comments or questions? Okay. Any comments? Do you want to have dates for like hand dates? Yes, we should. Okay. So uh, just real quick, because um, it'll come up quickly, next week is May. May 11th will be Candidates Night. That was sent out uh, on a public announcement by Dan Goldman. So remind that. Obviously, May 17th is the budget vote and the candidate vote. Um, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m., Kiwanis Food Trucks at the central office. Not at the high school, just to remind everybody. Our next meeting, we're back in the boardroom on May 10th. Yep. yep. 
Any other comments or questions? Motion to adjourn. So moved by Julene. Second. Seconded by Sue. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. This has been a special presentation from the Brighton Central School District Board of Education.